And so I, I, I work this, I live this, and I decided to write about it. And I believe that people are going to be shocked to learn that balance isn't what they think it is. Yeah, I was, uh, to be honest. I'll just be like totally transparent because I know I can be and I know that you're correct and you corrected me through this book. But for me, a lot of people come to me because they see all the, the, the plates that I'm holding or attempting to hold up. And they say, man, how do you balance it all? And this is what I've said, Pastor Torre, and obviously your book has rebuked me. But prior to you reading your book, I said balance is a myth. I said there's no such thing as balance. Uh, it's impossible to balance. What you can do is be your best in these different areas at different moments and different seasons and try to make it all work universally. But at the same time, I just don't think that there's balance. And so one of the things that um, I have found through reading your book is what you just said. Balance is not what we think it is. So you went on this journey. You did the research. You poured your heart into this. When you say balance is not what we think it is, what is it? I think that the majority of us believe when they when a person comes to you and says, man, I, I just need balance in my life. What they're asking you for or what they're referring to is the ability to accurately divvy themselves up to all of the responsibilities or things that they believe are important to them. So they're basically asking, how do I give pieces of myself to all of these things that are important? I've got 25 things that are important, but there's only one of me. And so I'm trying to figure out how to divide myself up into 25 pieces, worthy pieces, and give them to others. And that's not balance. I, I can't give 25, I can't give 10% of me to my wife, Sarah. I, I can't give 10% to my kids. I can't give 10% to our church. I can't give 10% to our investors or to our businesses. How, how, that's, that's not fair. So what balance is about is becoming all of yourself, becoming your whole self, and then giving your whole self to all of those various things at any given moment. And so that's what it's about. It's really about, you know, becoming and then giving your best to everything that's important. Now, there are disciplines, there are rules. You know, you can't be every place at the same time. And so to your earlier point, I'm not quite sure that you were off, you know, uh, about how you saw things. You do have to be sensitive enough to know what needs what the most at a given point. But you still want to be able to bring all of yourself to whatever it is that you are uh, responsible for in that moment. So, I, you know, if I, if I juxtapose the two of us, it's like you have three times every category that I have. I got one church. You got two. <laughs> I got one business and three in my head. You got 17. <laughs> I got three kids. I think y'all got six. Six. So for you, as you were entering in, we, we, you found it. You figured it out. But as you were entering into this attempt to find balance, what were some of the trial and errors that you found? Maybe some things that you thought you should do in an effort to find balance that actually were counterproductive to what you are actually going for. Because I think that a lot of people listening and tuned in want balance and maybe they are going to try this or try that to find it. What are some warnings you would give us up front? as we attempt to do this? Oh, absolutely. It's a phenomenal question. So I was of the old mindset of you, you've just got to give pieces of yourself to others, to those that are important to you. So what I would do is I would try to do just that. I, there would be days, so we've got six kids, as you, as you mentioned, and there would be days where I said, I am going to spend one-on-one -on -one time with all of our six kids in a day, sometimes maybe even two days, right? And that seems noble. You know, well, you, you can spend an hour here, take this one to lunch, walk this around, around the park, throw the football with this one and do all that. And I tried that. And what was, what was bad was by the time I got to four or five, <laughs> man, they were getting a zombie version of daddy. They, they were getting, I mean, it was, it, it was so bad that it, it actually, it, I shouldn't have, it was worse after than it was in the activity. 
And so I learned that, no, you, you can't do it like that because you didn't give them. You love your daughter, but you didn't give your daughter your best you. You gave her leftovers. You gave her fumes. You love your son. You love your wife. And you were there. You were present. But all of you was not present. And as a result of it, it made the experience really counterproductive because it's all about memories. And that necessarily was not memorable. And so I would say, and this again is why the, the theme of the book is so important. You know, it's a mistake to try to do it all. Instead of trying to do it all, be all of you and then schedule meaningful quality moments with, with the people you love, with the people you lead, uh, with the, the people you're in partnership with so that each moment can be meaningful. Uh, that can play itself out in the business space as well. Taking on meetings, you know, you need to talk to this employee, you know, you need to talk to this volunteer, you know, but you're you're at your best and they're driving and they're driving for the meeting and they need it. It's a legitimate need, but you're not ready. And so you got to take care of you first. You become whole. And then from your place of wholeness, then you move about and engage in these various areas of responsibility. I think that's the probably the biggest um, hallmark takeaway that I took away from reading your book, because when you think about the pursuit of balance, you're usually thinking about others. You're usually thinking about how can I um, positively impact my kids, my wife, my customers, my church. Um, and what you're challenging us is to first forget them for a second and look inward in order to achieve the balance that you think that they need the journey starts with you putting yourself in order. Do I have that accurately? You you do very much so. And we have to remember that we are a limited resource. We're, we're a limited resource. And the challenge with those of us who are, you know, creative and ambitious is that we have unlimited vision. <laughs> so we've got unlimited vision, unlimited passion, unlimited desire, and sometimes, quite frankly, unlimited opportunity at times, you know, but that does not, um, you know, uh, disqualify the fact that you and I are ourselves a limited resource. And so if I am a limited resource and my goal and my vision is to bring the best of myself to those things that I'm called to, then I have to now manage the resource of me so that I can be a resource to those that I'm called to touch.